Zeppelin and I feel that it's real, but all the crap that you will pull in is just making me ill. What makes you think that you're the only one? Who- I'm Odd Cole, and I'm based out of Mankato, but uh, I'm originally from Mount Lake, Minnesota. It's a really small town in Minnesota, and if like you want to be comparative with your small town that a lot of people say, oh, I'm from a small town, but it's like a graduating class of 160. Like I had a graduating class of 32, and half of the 16 girls in my graduating class had babies. So, I mean, it was, it was a crazy time growing up in a small town where everyone knew everyone's last name. They knew what was going on. You know, I knew everyone's grandparents. Literally, it was, it was cool. But as soon as one little thing happens in a small town, it spreads like wildfire. As a pres- I, uh, I walk up and I say, hey, I'm your biggest fan. <laughs> like, how are you doing? You know, like, h- how have you been? I try, to, I try to be nice, but not in like a creepy way, you know? That came off a little creepy, just a little bit. But like, I'm your biggest fan. As an artist, same way. That's kind of that's how, I, how I roll. I'll be like, hey, I'm Odd Cole, but I'm your biggest fan. And uh, I, really, I really am looking forward to uh, getting to know you. I actually don't like to tell people that I make music. I like to randomly do it. That or like if I'm DDing people, which happens a lot, I just throw on my shit in the car, you know? And they're like, damn, who's this? I'm like, me, fuck you. <laughs> and they usually are like, no way, bro. I'm like, hold up, wait till I start singing country. Check it out. And you know, like the reactions I get are <laughs> so fun. They are so fun. So as Odd Cole... Um, if, if it wasn't copyrighted, I'd love to call it the odd squad, you know, but I can't, and that's fine. But like, as, uh, as an artist, I have multiple different personas that I've been getting into because I like to multi-genre hit music. I want to make a song in every genre. I mean, I'm working on one for a Christian, a Christian rock song for my mom. Cause, uh, she, that's what she wanted and I'm all about it hundred percent. But like, uh, the different characters I have, I have this country thing I can do because I can go real deep with Twang. And his name's Old Pastel. Me and my friends named him. He's got his entire personality. Um, Liger King, or Liger Prince, I should say, like Tiger King. It's a Tiger King mullet wig. I perform at shows with it on. I call him Liger Prince. He goes hard as fuck. He's, uh, he's more punk, you know. And then Pimp Velvet, which is... a uh, zebra red velvet costume that i wear with nothing underneath that's like part of the whole thing it's terrible but that's just who he is and he does r&b and uh then you've got odd cole who is kind of like the mothership i don't know if you've seen meet dave but it's kind of on on that kind of thing but for each of these personas they actually have their own sets of likes and personalities and and everything that they're into and i originally was going to go into acting and I method act into all these different personas to be able to sing like them and do their voices and stuff and throw it all around. And I get requests for every single individual artist that I have created like under, under my own odd call persona. It's, 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 it's hard to keep track of sometimes, you know, cause a lot of my songs now are mixing them all together and like switching between those, the, it is definitely a learning experience. You know, I have thought about that. And I don't think there's going to be many tracks submitted by Odd, like put out there by Odd Cole that will say featuring Liger Prince or featuring, you know, Pimp Velvet. But there definitely be, will be one saying featuring Old Pastel. He, uh, he's getting more requests than Odd Cole or anybody else is. He might, he might be my, uh, my ticket to fame. So, you know, I'm, I'll ride with him. You know, originally I didn't like country, but sure shit, I could do the voice and sing it like that. So, like, why not? And half the stuff is all about sad, like, sad shit happening. And I'm, it's pretty easy to, to vibe with that frequency. <laughs> you know what I mean? So this new, this new song uh, is called Jackson do do that I've been working on. I wanted to make a fun singing song about how my dad decides to drink and make it a whole Jackson song to use my last name for my advantage because there's so many celebrities. But like, uh, they don't want it. They don't want it. They left a kick and reset. They don't want it. They said Jackson do do Wow. They don't want it. They don't want it. Now right for kick and reset. They don't want it. They said Jackson do do Driving down your avenue. Go.
completely cuckoo with it. You who's from Chiquitas, that Jackson Dosey doe. Driving the new pickup truck back roads, baby, tear it up. These doolies never get in stuck, Jackson Dosey doe. So when you need it, propagating, baby girl, and you'll find it round and round now. That's it, Jackson Dosey doe. Go spin in circles, getting dizzy, and start to dance like Urkel all together. It's that Jackson Dosey doe. Like some. Something fun like that. It's a, it is a voice change. It's super fun. The cool thing about Old Pastel, my favorite part about him, is that ladies love him for some reason. Okay. Ladies love a dude that can sing country. It is profoundly uninteresting to me, but, you know, I'm not going to bite the hand that feeds me. And uh, the other part is my voice never gives out with my country part because it's just a deep rasp. You know, my punk stuff, three songs in and I'm fucked. Like, it's... I don't know how to hold back. It's my music, and I fucking love it, and I want to sing it loud, and it's so tough not to. But I'm on stage, and every single picture you see, like, of the last shows I've done, I don't know if you, any of you see any of them, but, like, my neck veins pop like fucking crazy because I forget to breathe. I simply forget to breathe. And uh, people, are on, people are in the front row, and they're like, breathe. And I'm like, okay. Like, they are surprised. Uh I took this huge left turn into some punk shit. I made R&B and hip hop and rap like crazy on it, pop, like lots of pop. And then suddenly I was like, let's make a fucking punk song. And then I started writing one with a couple buddies, uh, Belts and uh, Exquisite. And that's uh, going to be the title track for a punk album I'm making with Exquisite now. And that's called Breakdown. You can check that out. I hope that'll be coming out this fall. That should be the fucking plan. I'll update you otherwise. Um, but I took this huge left turn to start doing punk music. And, man, if the energy doesn't come out of that, I tell you what, I'm on some Blink-182 shit blowing people's minds. It has been like, oh, my God, I like cold. I like Odd Cole more than Panic at the Disco. That's what I'm going to be fucking hearing. Watch me. It's okay. I love you. I discovered CC. Um, because I had a few friends that had come up here to do interviews. Uh, Jacob G had come up here, Kent Vinyl, done a couple songs with Kent Vinyl now. Uh, Demo, done a couple songs with him, got a few in the works with uh, Jacob G. And uh, I was honestly kind of giddy after like they had all those interviews and shit, and uh, I got DM'd by, uh, you know, who is Mr. 507 over here on Snapchat first, which was kind of a pretty cool indicator. And then I got DM'd on Instagram, and... Here I am doing an interview. I've wanted to do one for so long, but I didn't want to see one of like one of those petty dudes. It's just like, hey, you want to like fucking interview me? I promise I'm cool. Like, no, I want to be. I want to be sought after. Like, and then that's cool. I want you guys to get to know the real me because I barely know him. My last meal would probably be like a Laotian smorgasbord, like a fucking whole, like. So growing up in Mountain Lake. Huge in the Lao community. I was the one white kid that was with them all. All the little Asian kids call me Uncle Bacow, which means Uncle White Guy. All the OG, like, Asian people um, all call me Bakut, which means curly-headed boy. And, like, I was the one white dude at everything at the Pukans, which are, like, uh, baby showers. But everyone just gets fucked up on Hennessy. Like, fucked up. And don't deny it. You know that it's true. Like, that's the whole point of it. But it's okay. Had a lot of fun, you know? Like, I've gone to a lot of Lao get-togethers, funerals, like, the the whole Buddhist thing. I've been around all that. I know a good grip of um, Laotian, like speaking it for the most part. Most of it's swear words and asking if you have a lighter. Like, uh, kafaiba is, uh, do you have a lighter? Or like, uh, do you have a cigarette? Is uh, supia? Or do you want to smoke a cigarette? Supia wall. You know, but you know, cup uh, lai, you know, for all the Lao homies watching this, big ups. Um, yeah, probably a big old smorgasbord. I want papaya salad. I want uh, psychoc. I I want lop, but I like the lop my my dad makes. He makes it with lobster. He's big in the Lao community too. Makes his own like makes his own literal everything with it, and it's pretty impressive. I mean, I got a pestle and and uh, mortar for for Christmas for fuck's sake. Like that's I use Thai chili peppers and garlic and fucking everything. It's beautiful. It's such it wrecks your insights though. Okay. I thought about this question a lot and I think my favorite thing it would have boiled down to was uh there was a point when I was in seventh grade and they were doing a Christmas like choir show for all the grades. But they wanted something to put in the middle. And they learned that I knew how to beatbox. 
because I've been beatboxing through high school. I love beatboxing. And they were like, hey, would you be interested in doing like a Christmas beatbox kind of thing? And I was like, that'd be tight. But I, I would also like to do a rap, but I wouldn't be able to do that all by myself. And there was this little kid. He was like a fourth grader at the time. Uh, he uh, he kind of knew how to beatbox. And like I sat down with him and I, I worked with him and uh, I wrote a Christmas rap with his beatboxing. And uh, we performed it live at the show, and it was crazy. I was This was before I had any style. I didn't dress like this back in the day. I mean, I, I wore, like, this weird diamond supply jacket with fucking fake taper, long-ass gauge earrings. Fakes. Fake ones, just so you know. I was a... <sighs> it's, been, it's been a wild couple of years, okay? <laughs> but that was, that was probably my favorite project that I ever did in high school. I didn't start making music till till way later in life. So it was... Uh, a beatbox remix to Pachelbel's Canon in D minor. Oh, people shit bricks when they found out that I could hum and beatbox at the same time. That literally blew the whole school's mind. People were like, how do you do that? I'm like, it's not, I don't know, it's not. I don't know, I guess it wasn't that hard to start to do, doing something like, um, like that shit's hard to throw, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, they just they thought the beatboxing was cool. Sometimes they just asked me to beatbox. I mean, personally, one of my like dreams that it's happened like once or twice randomly at the studio when a large group of artists get together. But I would love to be at a party and have my homies like run into these guys that know how to freestyle. And I honestly can't freestyle. It's one of my biggest struggling things. I'll come up. I'll talk about that later. But like, I want to be like, I want them to be like, hey Cole, come over here quick. I'm going to need you to beatbox for these guys so that they can freestyle rap battle. And I'll fucking hit you with the sickest beat. Every time I'm in the studio and it goes quiet, what do I do? I beatbox. And what happens? Everyone fucking freestyles every single time. And it's, it's cool like that. I just want to be asked to do it. You know what I mean? Mac Miller. Uh, the first time I ever saw Mac Miller, I was uh, visiting my stepbrothers. I was watching uh, MTV back when they actually played music videos and shit. And Knock Knock came on. It was the first Mac Miller song I ever heard. I'm not an OG listener who had listened to all of his old mixtapes. I became that way, but that was the first song I ever heard by him, and it literally lit the fire under my ass. Mac Miller was such an inspiration. One of my biggest dreams was to not even to exactly make a song with him, but to literally sit down and write a song with him. Like, I just know that it would be a vibe. I really, I really do. His, I have a Mac Miller tattoo. Like, he... He was such a big inspiration for me. It, I cried harder after he died than most of my relatives. So I got like these little butterflies all in my guts like right before I go up there. And I'm just like kind of nervous and really quiet and just trying to really get into the zone. I think that's what it is. My body's trying to get into the zone. But then like as soon as I'm up there, I melt and I make that thing my bitch. That stage is mine. I sh it, it's, it is a superpower. It is 100% a superpower. I watched Belts with a really messed up knee, stumbling everywhere. I had to help him up onto the stage. And as soon as he was up there, he was dancing around. That stage took a... He said he knew he's going to hurt after it, but he's like, as soon as I get up there, I'm not going to feel it. I know what the stage is. And sure as shit, dude, is no way that didn't hurt. And there wasn't a single sign of pain on his face. There wasn't any, like, you don't feel it when you're up there. That's why I don't feel it when I run out of air when I'm breathing. Like, I'll push it all out of me until my lungs collapse, I swear. My first show was for a buddy's going away party at Molly's Bar here in Mankato on Madison. And uh, it was a big learning experience. I learned to keep the mic closer to my face. I learned uh, that there are better ways to structure your set. I'm not going too long, am I? There, there are better ways to structure your set. I didn't have the right energy in line for my set. It sounded off. Like, you'll hear it far later, but there was a song called She Don't Know, and it's going to be coming out, and it's really slow and sweet and R&B and vibey, 
but I opened with that. That was, it just wasn't the move. I learned, big time learned. I thought about this question too, and I think, I think the answer would be like, uh, not my singing range exactly, but the vocal range, being able to, like there, there are songs where I have to shift from character voices immediately one to the other. Like, for example, I would start with uh, being really smooth in R&B in one line, and then the second line I transition to a super deep, like, a country voice, and then bam, I'm punk again. And if I tell you it didn't take so much practice to get that down, that shit was hard. But as soon as I got it down, I was so proud of myself. You can do it. You can literally do anything. You can do anything you set your mind to if you practice it enough. It's crazy what you can train your body to do. I've fallen in love with this whole country thing, honestly. But I still love to rap and do R&B and hip-hop and literally everything. I imagine it would be pretty great because uh, me and Demo made an absolute banger in 10 minutes. He, uh, We found this beat I loved. And he can freestyle sing. He sounds like Bieber, so he's basically a god. He hopped in the booth, started freestyle singing, sounded dope. And in the two minutes that he was in there, I had written enough of my verse. I hopped in there too. It's called Dreamcatcher. You're going to check it on the um, F3 mixtape that he's going to be dropping in the next few months. And uh, man, that shit is so good. Literally being whipping it out like that is so fun. It feels... It almost feels unauthentic because it didn't take you very long to create it. It didn't take a whole lot of the process. But sometimes you can just be triggered into being able to make something on the fly so fucking fast. So fast. Oh, yeah. I'm a storytelling artist. All my music tells a story. I'm not just rapping about nothing. That's just, I can't, I can't just rap about nothing. It's hard, actually. Oh, man, if they haven't found a cure for problems then uh, I'm pretty fucked gosh I don't know if I want to live that old I'm not gonna lie there's people that are way that are awful worse than me but like I, I feel it like I don't I don't want this shit to keep happening the rest of my life especially if I'm stuck in a wheelchair you know how hard it would be to emergency dump if you were in a wheelchair okay I just want to like not to be gross but straight up you're like oh god I gotta shit my pants but then you what are you going to do? Like, if you can't find a, a fucking uh, handicap stall or whatever, you know, wherever you are, that is, is a heartbreaking thing to think about. I don't want to, I don't want to, my knees are going out, my stomach's going out, my brain's going out. I'm falling apart, I'm falling to pieces, and I'm giving you every bit of me till then. I'll be putting one of those AI chambers so I can just live in a lucid dream. Uh, number one for, for artists type stuff, uh, freestyling. Like Captain One Bar, I can't fucking do anything, but I can write an awesome verse really quickly. That's not that's not ever the problem. Um, the second would be taking claim to things. I don't ever want to feel egotistical or bad. I'm still new to this whole artist thing, and every time I feel like I'm promoting myself, I know that that's good, but I feel selfish and fucked up for doing it. I don't want to seem egotistical or like a guy who's full of himself. I love my music, and I think I make great music, and I want you all to like it too. And I just, it's not ever going to get to my head. Like, I know it won't. I stay way too humble for that all the time. Like, I know I'm flexing, but I'm still humble. Like, I still will absolutely put me in the same, like, that's why I love working with everyone from the studio, okay? Like, all of, all the mock production team, party, demo, exquisite, like, Belts, all of them, they push me to make better music each and every time. You know how cool it feels to write a song with another artist and then spit your, they finish their verse first, then you finish yours, and you show them your verse, and they throw away their fucking verse because you wrote such a good verse. It is, an, it is a great feeling. And, like, they keep pushing me to do that. I would never be able to evolve without that. Um, I mean, I do have... I got mental problems, but I, I mean, I do think that everyone kind of has them to some extent. Everyone's got anxiety nowadays. If you've drank milk in the past 15 years, you probably have anxiety now. It's the hormones, man, fucking us up. But I love milk. I don't care. Even though my tummy don't, I don't care. Oh, I love cereal so much. <laughs> but cereal don't like me, man. It don't like me. Okay, so it had a limited run a couple times. But it's blueberry toast crunch 
and it is the best stoner cereal. It's like you dipped a blueberry muffin in that hoe. She's so good. God, I'm sorry, guys, but damn, that fucking cereal is so good. I saw them reload the shelves with it finally once, one, uh, one fall, like two years ago. I was like, no fucking way. I took nine boxes, bro. I'm a, I'm a quick trip guy. I eat there twice a day. It's the best restaurant in Mankato. Super great. Shout out KT. No, not even the cheesy breadsticks. Those things give me heartburn, man. Fuck that. It's that, it's that uh, chicken tender melt. She good. She real good. Their burritos are good. I don't even go to the tornadoes anymore. I just hit something that's on the shelves, man. I've honestly been, I've been doing this thing where I get off work and I buy one of their breakfast croissant sandwiches and I also buy a chicken sandwich and I take the chicken patty off and I put it on that sandwich and it's fucking fire. It's so good. Well, I did. I lost 90 pounds in the past year and I did that by doing the keto diet. It wasn't just from malnutrition. I was, I was you know, actively dieting and stuck to it and it worked. I lost 90 pounds and it changed my life in so many ways, but I ate quick trip every day without cheating the diet. But here's the thing. I'd go in there and I'd buy a double cheeseburger. I'd peel off the buns and I'd buy a quick witch, which is like a pepper jack and Genoa salami cheese sandwich with no bread. Okay. You take the bread off the burger, you put it on it. Turn it upside down so that you don't get grease all over your hand. And you eat it burger and cheese slice. And it's fucking fire. I ate one today. This morning. Before I picked Josie up. Oh, it. I'll tell you, it worked. Everything changes. Man, I had to get new pants. I had to get new belts. I, my, my pee-pee works different. Everything's different. It's awesome. I keep that amount of space on my jiggly-ass watch because it reminds me of how much weight I've lost. And it is... Man, it can be done. I helped another buddy get into it, and he's like four or five months in, and he's lost 60 pounds. I was almost 300. I was like pre-dis- uh, pre-diabetic symptoms, and I was scared for that. So I just started dieting hella hard. And on the keto diet, I wouldn't recommend working out. You don't have the energy for it. But, uh, man, I mean, it It works. It definitely works. I tried to get getting jacked after the keto diet. I got addicted to go to the gym. And then I found out I have diastasis recti, which is like a partition in my abdominal wall. So it separates when I work out any abdominal exercise. And if it separates, I could tear my intestinal sac. So I'm not allowed to work out anymore. I thought about this and uh, I was talking with Josie about what her answer was going to be for this question. And she was mentioning a lot of amazing female artists. And I thought about that for a second and I would absolutely kill on a song with Jesse Reyes. If you're listening to this, hit me up. I, I got you. Like, for real. Like, I'm not just... It's going to be amazing. Okay? And then, Dead? I feel like people would expect me to say Mac. Because he's my favorite artist of all time. But it's not. It would definitely be Lil Peep. I think writing some with Lil Peep to feel that vibe. If, if it was just one song I got to write with him, I'd be able to feel enough energy to figure out so many questions I have about him. I think I would. By writing with him. You learn a lot about the other person by writing with them. Like the trueness of his self that would come out. The things he would instinctually and naturally do. Like all the time. Those are the things. I notice everything. I notice everything that's going on around me. I have such bad ADD. It's fucking terrible. And the anxiety tied in with that. It makes it kind of nuts. I'm always concentrated. It's like I walk into a room full of TVs and I got to know what's on each screen, but I also don't, I also need to know what's on every channel of every fucking screen. So it makes it super tough, but, uh, writing with low people would be tight. That would be super cool. I think, I think that would be so much fun. Him or, him or Cuddy, but I think, I think people would take it before Cuddy, a koala. I'd be the chillest fucking koala. So like koalas are like, I just imagine like for proportionate size that that's about right to be a fucking cuddly chill little bear, right? And you sleep majority of the time, right? And you're always comfy and hanging out with your family. But like also if you fuck with him, he's got like razor sharp claws and can just kill you if he decides to. I don't like getting that angry, but don't mess with me if you really don't want to. Like I I really will never get angry, but you touch a loved one and I'll fucking snap them. You know, and that's how I feel like a koala would be. And that's why I feel like I resonate real well with a koala. All he does is just sit there and eat eucalyptus and chill. That's what I want to be. I want that. You know, little guy just chilling in the tree. Koala. Odd koala.
That's tough. So there's there's two. So my favorite place to create would be in my car. I I live an hour away from my hometown, and I go to visit my family quite often. And I love to freestyle in the car. Like I said, I'm bad at freestyling, and I'm not lying at that, but I do find the perfect flow every time I freestyle. They're just not words. It's gibberish, and it sounds like crap. So I record that on my whole drive, and then later when I get home, I literally basically uh, decrypt like the songs and turn the melody and garbage lyrics into fire ones. Turn the garbage into fire. And and that seems, yeah, it's my favorite way to do it. And I can't do it with someone else in the car. That's why I like doing lone drives. Otherwise, uh, my personal favorite place to to write music. So like, in the morning, my whole my whole daily routine before I found out I had diastasis recti is like, I'd wake up, I'd light a J, I'd start the coffee maker, I'd take a shower just because I feel grungy when I wake up, by the and finish the J on the toilet before the shower, and get out of the shower, have that cup of coffee, get ready, go to the gym, smoke my dab pen. And then I'll go into the gym, and because I can't work out anymore like that, I can do cardio. So I'll go blazed and do four miles of incline while writing music. I'll put in my AirPods in, and I'll throw beats on, and I'll start writing. And, like, I'm very empathetic with energy, especially my own music. So, like, if I'm writing good stuff, I'm literally just, like, like going crazy on the treadmill there's nobody to my left and right at all times the whole place is packed but no one's by me because they know i'm just kind of fucking throwing down and going nuts you know and i you know no one can hear the music it's only me so i bet i look absolutely hilarious and but that's my favorite place to write because i feel like i'm also giving a show it does and i'm work i'm tricking myself into working out you don't notice it when you get into the vibe of writing a song you stop breathing it's my biggest problem. Uh, yeah, they, I mean, I, I feel like it's pretty traditional in the gym that if you see someone with both of his AirPods in, you don't disturb them, you know, unless you want to ask them if they're done with the machine they're not by anymore or something like that. So the next thing that I plan to drop um, around that time would be the UFO Volume 1, uh, my first full studio album. And it, uh, it's got all these songs that I've been culminating over this past year and a half, a bunch of features with a bunch of awesome friends. It's got a song with Party. It's got a song with Demo. It's got a song with Exquisite. Like, it, it ranges so far with all of the songs, and they literally give a little bit of country, punk, R&B, everything, all mixed up there, like a big old odd call sushi roll. You know what I'm saying? And it's a bite I want to take. Yum yum, mix that wasabi with that soy sauce. I would love to make a music video for most of my songs. Have, making that happen is a little tougher than, than it is to say it. But uh, I already have a whole music video idea planned out with another uh, local Mankato artist. It goes by Trey. He, uh, we made a song called All the Smoke together. And it's basically like a big F you song kind of thing like like get out of our way we're coming in we're up next type thing but also like i'll bang your mom like it's all over the song i'm not just saying that to say it right now listen to the song and you'll understand my vibe I, it's cool <laughs> and your grandma so you know so i would love to shout out mock production studios like guys i know you're listening like if i hadn't met you i would have stopped making music altogether 100 percent there's, I would have had no outlet. I had nowhere to go. I didn't know what to do. That day I met Exquisite to be able to connect to you guys was the day it all set back into place. I was going to stop making music altogether. I was. So thank you guys for that. You guys have been awesome. You guys really lit the fire back under me. Plus you guys are all super competitive. We get so competitive in there. Oh my God, we keep making each other better. Um, next, uh, DJ Ewish. He's out of Mankato too. He's a good friend, and he is the reason I've been getting all my sets this year. He's an amazing DJ, and uh, 
I'm going to I'm going to try to have him DJ my sister's wedding that I'm going to be officiating next year and run in the as an MC for the reception. And uh uh the third one for the the big 3 I suppose would be Ryan Rutch's photography. He he takes the dopest pictures, man. He's making a promo video for me right now. He does music videos. Ryan Rutch's hit him up. He knows what he's doing. He absolute knows he absolutely knows what he's doing. I wanted to flex because the shout outs I had, I wanted to memorize it, but I wrote it on the car right here. So I'm gonna whip out my phone. It's got I've got a list and it goes like Demo, Sachi, Belt, and BZ. See Flo and Jacob G plus Exquisite and Party. And then it's Baxter G G with a three not a B. Josie Oi, Trey, Tori, and Kent, and my family. And with my family, I want to give a shout out to my mom, my stepdad, my dad, my stepmom, my stepsister, my stepsister, my stepsister, my stepbrother, my stepbrother, my niece, 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 and my niece. Uh, And if any of you guys are watching, I really hope you loved it. And Olivia, I really hope you're watching this. I made this new song on UFO. I can't wait for you to hear it this summer. I sang it to her live. I, I went to my sister's house to show her the song before I had ever recorded. I did it to her live, and she was dancing and freaking out all over me. She loved it so much. So it's ah, it's been so much fun. Oh, my God. I'm so pumped. Huh. But, yeah, a um, lot of family, a lot of family, and, fr- and all my friends. You know, I don't want to forget them. They've been, they've been supportive, too. Levi, um, Austin, uh, Dylan, literally my brother, my sister's come to all my shows. My little sister's come to all my shows. She's managed to come to all of them. She has my songs memorized. She plays it. She shows it to people. She's so proud of her big brother. And I think this is the first time I've had that happen. And, uh, yeah, it's been a wild ride. So look out for odd Cole coming out throughout this year. I've got, I've got the UFO dropping, uh, sometime this summer, right before the summer. Then after that, it'll be uh, the Loverboy EP, which is my sweeter, sexier R&B, you know, bedroom banging songs. Then uh, I've got a 13-track punk album I'm making with Exquisite. And uh, that I, I want to drop sometime in the fall. I'm hoping to. That is that is the the main goal, at least. And then, like... 25 other singles that I keep just doing out of nowhere. It's been so much fun. I can't wait for you guys to hear my new stuff. I'm pumped about it.